Hi, my name is Joe Humaris, a freestyle skater from New York City. My sponsors, Walker Skateboards and Ice Innovative Clothing Exchange, often send me all over the country. Here in LA are two of the best professionals about to session with their friends in a backyard half pipe. The pastime that was first known as sidewalk surfing has at last come into its own. It's matured into full professional status. Skaters have designed and refined their gear, have created and polished their tricks, and have developed skills which have allowed skateboarding to be recognized as a full-blown legitimate sport. And as in every sport, skateboarding has its personalities. Those whose special ability and unique style have set the best apart from the rest. These are the skaters who have captured the public's imagination. This is Christian Hasoy, one of the best known and admired professional skaters in the world. You can see he has a graceful style that packs plenty of power. He's an aggressive skater. He attacks the half pipe with an explosive energy. He seems to have a natural ability to execute near flawless aerials. He's up there with the very best, a world champion. Many would describe his skating as surf style, but Soy likes to stay as smooth as possible, high and stylish. In a few words, Christian communicates primarily through his skating. He loves music and he loves to put on a show. He's known for finding the time to guide and encourage beginners, to show them how to skate safely and well. Consequently, he has a well-deserved popularity with the younger skaters. To untold thousands of kids, Christian Hussoy is a true cult hero. Soy is sort of a lone wolf, rather than follow the pro pack with factory sponsorship from one of the major skateboard manufacturers, he has taken the riskier course and gone into business for himself. He owns his own skateboard company which he manages with the help of his dad, Ivan, who is himself heavily involved in the sport. Christian appears to be a very good businessman. His boards are very popular and they sell extremely well. But deep down his heart is in skating. He is extremely dedicated to the sport. If there were no money in it, I think he would skate just as often, just as far. Christian is the type who yearns to skate forever. put it in his own words, life after skateboarding is death. Of all forms of skateboarding, perhaps the most elegant is freestyle. With the grace and form of an Olympic athlete, this world champion works out in a fast food parking lot to a very appreciative audience. People have this image that skaters are bums, that all they care about is skating, that that's their whole life. Well, for some it's like that, but for most, skating is not only their sport, it's their art. While some people sneer and call skating goofing off, others call it dedication. Most great artists and great athletes think like that. They concentrate on their sport or their art. For the pro skaters, skating is number one in their lives, and that dedication 
I think is what helps make them as great as they are. This is a true superstar, as good as they get. He's been skating half his life, but he's no airhead. He's in a top-notch college studying to be a biomedical engineer. Right now, I would say that this is about as good as it gets. He's simply the best. In fact, I think that on anyone's list of the world's 10 best freestyle skaters, he's one through nine, or maybe one through 11. As skating becomes more and more popular and therefore more legitimate in the eyes of the establishment, more people will see the pro skater as a mainstream athlete. Perhaps it will become an Olympic sport. Who knows? But few skaters actually care. They are mainly anti-authoritarian, basically rebels at heart. They skate for the fun of it. I'm a freestyle skater myself. I think it's the most technical form and the most difficult to master. You have to be willing to sacrifice, get in shape, and to make a commitment to yourself to practice hard, to spend long hours every day. When at last you get a trick wired, you learn to move in and out of it with other tricks. So virtually every maneuver can be done alone or in combination, and every combination has an endless number of variations. You're separate from the rest of the world. You're in a state of intense concentration. Like being in a dream. It's beautiful, it's everything. It's so explosive, creative, and energetic. It's, it's very personal. It's basically a form of self-expression. My name is Steve Bronco, I'm a professional skater, I ride for Simp Skateboard. Today we're going to be showing you guys some basic tricks that you need to know in order to learn the harder tricks of skating. The first thing I'd like to show you is a front side slide. The reason you're going to learn a front side slide is Number one, you have to be able to slow down when you're skating. You can't always skate at full speed. Number two, you can come to a complete stop with a front side slide. You don't have to put your foot down. You don't have to lose control of the board. You can almost, you can almost come to a complete stop. Once you learn it on flat, now you can start doing it on banks. You can start doing it everywhere. Make sure you have the trick wired before you try anything else. Front side slide on the bank is also used to control your speed and the direction in which you come off the bank. If you want to be coming back up the bank, back down, wherever. You have to learn to do this trick. The next trick we're going to learn is a boneless one. Boneless ones can be used for going over things. The best way to learn a boneless one is on the flat ground. Grabbing your board, bending your knees and relaxing, bringing the board up, and then pushing off the ground, giving yourself time to get your foot back on the board. Once you learn a bonus one on flat, you can start applying it to the bank. The 
main thing to remember when you're going to do a bonus one on the bank is relax so you can bend over and grab the board. Okay? Number two is when you're boosting off, make sure you're boosting in a direction that's going to land you back down the bank in a line, not sideways. Once you learn this on banks, in the street, you can do it anywhere. You can do it on a ramp, you can do it over a car, you can do it anywhere you need to do it. The point we're trying to get across here today is you have to learn the basic thing before you go out and try things like 540s, 720s, 10-foot high Japan Air, all that kind of stuff. Basic things must be mastered. One of the great things about the sport is the non-sport element. Hanging out with your friends, hanging loose, and having a great time. Skaters are basically party animals. They ride hard, they party hard. And they take their fun seriously. It's like a real subculture. The world is divided into two groups, skaters and everybody else. You spend all day doing these intense tricks like radical 12-foot Japan airs, some gnarly McTwists, or acid drops off the garage roof. And then it's Miller time, man. For a couple of years, skating was on the decline. Practically every skate park in the country closed. It was the dark ages of skating. Now it's back, bigger and better than ever. Parks like this one, the world famous Del Mar Skate Ranch in Southern California, are doing a dynamite business. This is like Mecca. Any day of the week, this place is jammed, and on weekends, forget it. Board tosses can get pretty intense. Some kid catches a board, then a larger dude wrestles it away from him, and then a bigger guy fights him, and it goes on and on. The crowd starts to boil. It's like a feeding frenzy. Dude, you don't know. 
My name's Joe Humaris. I usually train in uh, New York City. There's a lot of energy here as far as skating. I mean, uh, there's a lot of good skaters, and the unfortunate thing is that since we're so far from the West Coast, where, you know, a lot of the media is centering, you know, as far as skating is concerned, we don't get as much exposure as we should be getting, which is too bad. You know, we really do deserve some. <laughs> we've been around for a long time, maybe not as long as California, but we've been skating for a while. My name is Lewis. I've been skating for about maybe two years. I just moved to New York a while ago. I think it's great. i only been here about four months. The place is wild. There's nothing better than New York City. There's so many places just street skate and skate everywhere. When I first came here, everyone's so friendly. Like, it's not a locals only scene. Like out in California, there's a lot of people that don't let you skate their spots. They got picked out because they don't want you there to get busted or anything, right? But in New York, they take you everywhere, and you can skate anywhere you want. It's just a free-for-all for everyone. I just love it here. My name is Pepe Torres, and uh, I like to skate. New York City, I think, is the best place to skate, because you have everything in here to skate, like banks, everything, all those places, like Washington Square Park, Brooklyn Bridge, everything. You know? So it's good for skate, I mean, it's, it's the best place to skate, I think. My name's Cal, and I'm a street skater in New York City. Uh, if you can make it in New York City skating without getting hit by a car, I basically think you can skate anywhere. Because uh, skating in the street in New York is really tough, because people try to hit you, you know? It's like the cabs, they'll try to run you over. They'll like slow down, and then they'll go, come on, come on, come on. And then they'll gun it, you know? So you got to be quick on your feet, or else you're going to get run over. Businessmen are the funniest. It's like, when you skate up on a businessman, they freeze. You know, they don't go either way. They just stay there and look at you and they're like, oh. And so, uh, you know, you got to run them over, you know. They, they ain't going to move out of your way, so you just kind of knock them out of your way and keep going. You know, never stop or else, you know, they'll, you'll get in trouble. <laughs> the skate of the future is going to be uh, the warriors of the future, right? They're going to be like, have this armor that's like incorporated into their clothes, like these shoulder pads and elbow pads and knee pads. And they're gonna skate around, if you're getting in the way, they're gonna knock you over and rip your head off. You know, and they're gonna like, be these ultimate crazy looking guys, you know. And like pretty soon, after a while, like they've already got the moto boards, they're gonna have jet boards, right? And they're gonna be going in the air, so watch out, man. Look up, or else you're gonna get run over by these guys in the air, running around, <laughs> these maniacs in New York City. Uh, I don't know, man, I like skating in New York. You gotta be dedicated. You, you have to be really dedicated in, in all types of skating, freestyle, vertical. You have to be willing to sacrifice, you know, put in a lot of hours. It takes a lot of practice to get good. It's, it's not an easy sport. It takes time to develop the balance and the coordination. But uh, the better you get, the funner it is. So, you know, it's something you get hooked on, you know. It's, it's really addictive. Yeah. Top skaters don't spend all their time in competitions or demos or even practicing for them. Often they kick back and just cruise, take in the view, check out the chicks, see and be seen, be a part of it all. You'll find some of the top skaters in the world just gliding through the crowd in places like this, Venice Beach, California, USA.
an innate sense of coordination and balance, courage, dedication, endless hours of practice, and a relentless determination to excel, to be the best, the heart and soul, and the body of an athlete. These are what it takes to be a star in the sport of skateboarding. If you feel you have what it takes, go to a skate shop, buy the best board you can afford, and give it a try. It's not easy, but then again, there's nothing in the world quite like it.